Hey folks, welcome back to Combo Class. I'm your teacher, Demotro, and today I wanted to tell you about how this equation that you may recognize, that 2 plus 2 equals 2 times 2, is secretly connected to this equation that you may recognize, that 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 1 times 2 times 3. And not only are they connected, but they're members of an infinite family of equations. These equations are often treated as completely separate fun facts about numbers. This one has a special property that 4 has when you combine a pair of 2s using pretty much any operation. We could even extend it to 2 to the power of 2. And this one associated with other things in algebra and geometry, such as the fact that 6 happens to be the third triangular number and the third factorial. So what do these two secretly have in common? Well, if we just look at this first part of it, both of these can be expressed as cases where we took a set of some numbers, a two and another two in this case, a one, a two, and a three in this case, and these sets happen to have the property that the product of all of the members in them was equal to the sum of all of the members in them. And that's not the only thing that these two have in common. But before we go too deep on this infinite family these are part of, let's zoom in on this particular case to see, are there any other examples of sets of just two numbers that have this property? Well, if you were looking for other pairs of numbers that had an equal sum as product, if you weren't restricting that they had to be whole numbers, you would stumble onto some other solutions like three and one and a half. Three plus one and a half equals three times one and a half. They're both four and a half. But what if you wanted to know more solutions or a way of finding any of the solutions? Well, when we're asking for a pair of numbers with an equal sum as product, it's like asking which numbers A and B can fit the equation A times B equals A plus B. And we could solve for one of these variables in terms of the other, like by subtracting A from each side, I would get AB minus A equals B, and then I could factorize that to A times B minus one equals B, and then I could divide by that to give me that A equals B divided by B minus one. And with this relationship between the two, I can pick almost any value I want my B number to be and create an A number that'll work with it in that way, where their sum is equal to their product. Like if I decide I want one of my numbers to be 2, I can plug in 2 for that B and say that A is equal to 2 over 2 minus 1, which is 2 once or 2 telling me that if one of the numbers is 2, the other number is also 2, that original case. But I could also plug in 3 and have gotten 1.5, or vice versa. I could even try plugging in things like negative 1, and I would find that if I put in negative 1 for b there, a simplifies to be 1 half. And it actually does work that negative one plus one half is equal to negative one times one half. So we can pick almost any number for one of these and there will be some other number that works with it in this way. I say almost any number because neither of them can be one. That's because if we tried to make b one, then this denominator would be 1 minus 1, which would give us a divide by 0 error. And there's also no number for b that would create the a being 1. Another reason to get a gut feeling for why neither of these could be 1 is that that would mean 1 times some number, which would make the number itself, equals the number plus 1. And that's not going to work. And we can also see this in action on a graph. 
if I turn these A's to X's and these B's to Y's or vice versa and graph x times y equals x plus y, or equivalently, I could have graphed something like y equals x over x minus one. Here's what I would get. We can see that I have two curves of possible solutions, and any point on one of those curves, the x coordinate combined with the y coordinate makes a pair that has the same product and sum. We can see the point 2, 2 is on there, as well as a more trivial 0, 0, and an infinite amount more of solutions on there. And we can also see that none of those solutions land when x is 1 or when y is 1, because there's an asymptote right there. But although there's an infinite number of solutions, if I had restricted myself to making both of them be positive integers, whole numbers bigger than zero, it turns out that this is the only solution. Meaning that this is the only point on either of those curves of infinitely many points that has both the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate be a positive integer. And it also means that it's the only set of two positive integers with the same product as sum. So this was the only solution of two positive integers in a set. But what about this case? where we had three numbers in a set with that property. Well, if we wanted to find other trios of numbers with the same sum as product, we could try and do something similar where we said which numbers x, y, and z fulfill the equation where x times y times z equals x plus y plus z, but that's going to be harder to solve algebraically in terms of a single variable knowing much about another single one, and it's going to be harder to graph without having a third axis or some sort of 3D graph. I will show you some graphs of particular values of z we could set, like we could say if z is 1, let's graph xy times 1 is x plus y plus 1, which is here, or if z is 2, here's the graph of 2xy equals x plus y plus 2, and here's when z is 3 and 4, and we can see this solution hidden in a few of those, because when z was 1, the coordinates 2, 3, and 3, 2 were on that graph. When z was 2, the coordinates 1, 3, and 3, 1 were on there. And when z was 3, the coordinates 2, 1, and 1, 2 were on there. And if we put z on a slider on that graph, we can zoom through all sorts of different combinations of what the other two could be and find all sorts of possible trios of numbers with this property if we didn't require them all to be positive integers. Like, for example, one that works that's sort of a flip of that is negative one, negative two, negative three, because the sum or product of those is negative six. And another that works is square root of three, square root of three, and square root of three, because those add or multiply to three times the square root of three. But if I restricted myself to only looking for solutions where all three of the numbers were positive integers, this would be the only solution. So what is it that makes these two special and stand out on these different sizes of sets? Well, it turns out they have a lot more in common than you might first realize. All right, now going forward, let's just worry about the positive integer solutions, like for two elements of a set, two and two was the only positive integer solution. For three elements in a set, 
one, two, three was the only one. Well, what if we wanted to figure out, is there some set with four numbers that has that same property? And if so, can we use these smaller ones to figure out what it might be? If you looked for traits these two sets have in common, you might notice that although they're different sizes, each of them has its maximum number. In this case, either of the twos is the biggest in it. And in this case, that's the biggest in it, equal to its size or amount of numbers. Like this one has two numbers and the biggest is a two. And this has three numbers and the biggest is a three. You might also notice that if we look at the number before that in the ascending order, in this case, another two, and in this case, also a two, that both of them are twos. So you might wonder if you can generalize those to find a possible four number set. Maybe you could follow this pattern and try a four number set where its largest number was equal to its number of elements, four, and the number before that in ascending order was a two, like both of those had. And if you play around with this a minute, you'd quickly find that one, one, two, four does work as a set with this property. Four positive integers that turn out to have their sum equal their product. And just like this one was the only case of two numbers with that property, and this one, assuming the order doesn't matter, is the only case of three numbers with that property, it has also been proven that this is the only four number set of positive integers with that property. So what about further? Can you keep extending this pattern? Well, if we tried to map what this pattern is, it's the last number in the set is, let's call n, the size of the set. The number before is a two, and it looks like all the rest of it is ones, meaning we would have some amount of ones before that, and the amount would be n minus two of them because the total amount of numbers we said was n. And although this might look different than this first example, it really is the same thing. As long as we describe what's going on as we have some number n at the end, a two before, and then if there are more than two numbers in our set, an amount of ones to make n minus two. In this case, n minus two for a size two set makes zero ones. So secretly, this is following that pattern. And so is the one, two, three, this one, one, two, four set, and a set of any size we want. Because if we look at the sum versus the product of this, for any size of n, the product is just going to be 2n. These ones multiplying won't change it. And the sum will also be 2n because we add n minus two ones, a two, and an n. So we can use this to create a five number set that'll have the same sum and product by making ones until we get to the last two elements of the set, which are two, and then the size of the set, five in that case. And these numbers will add or multiply to 10. And some people might think the questions would end there. But something interesting happens when we get to five number sets. Because in two number sets through four number sets, we only had one possible solution where they all were positive integers. But on the fifth level, this isn't the only possible solution with positive integers. And there's not just two solutions, there are three. 
Among the sets with five positive integers in them, which we'll call level five of this whole thing, not only can you make a set with an equal sum and product by using this formula, but you also could make the set one, 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 three, three. And these five numbers add or multiply to nine. You also could have gone one, one, two, 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 and those five numbers would have multiplied or added to eight. So what about further levels? Here's a list of some early levels and what solutions they have in positive integers. And yes, I did allow level one's trivial solutions to be on there, where if we allow the product or sum to equal itself, any natural number worked. Now on level five, we had these three solutions, but on level six, it's back down to just one solution, that basic way. Then on some future levels that I listed here, we can see the basic way, as well as some other ways to make them. Like with a size of seven, you can do a bunch of ones, a three and a four. Or with a size of, a, of 11, you could do the basic way. Or a string of ones, a three and a six, which adds or multiplies to 18. Or a string of ones, a two. Now, looking at this list, we can see that two, three, four, and six sort of stand out by only having that basic formula as the way of creating them, while the others have other options. And you might wonder, are there any other levels that only have that singular way of making them? And it turns out that when you get up to level 24, that's the next time that you can only build a set of that size using a string of ones, a two, and then the level number. And it's not just 24. That's the only other one in the first hundred numbers. But beyond that, here's a list. Oh, sorry, go, sorry, Carl. Here's a list of the only known levels that have been proven to just have that one basic formula as a way of constructing them. And all of the other levels up to a massive size have been proven to have more than one solution. I don't know what's up with these numbers that makes them special, but it's still somewhat an open question in math. And it's conjectured that this might be the largest ever, that there might not be any more levels after that that just have a singular solution, but that hasn't been proven yet. And although 444 does look kind of funny and cool in our base 10 way of writing numbers, this is a base independent trick where no matter how we write these numbers, these are the solutions and might hint at some fundamental patterns and links between addition and multiplication. And I love how some of these simplest ones on here we've seen in other contexts before. And there are a lot of ways to explain why they are true or to try and explain where their truth came from. And this is sort of like an alternate origin story for them, a particular infinite family that they are included as members of. And we will see them again in the future because they're cool identities, especially this one, the one plus two plus three equals one times two times three equals six. That one is magnificent and will definitely show up in future episodes. All right, folks, thanks for joining me here in combo class. To, whoa, uh, Carlo, the uh, clock's uh, on fire again. Uh, oh, no, the other wait, wait. setting, the other setting on those. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right, folks, thanks for joining me here in combo class. I'll see you next episode.